Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's River Tutorial. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, and if you're new to the channel, please think about clicking that subscribe button. I would really appreciate your support. This week's fly then is a balloon caddis, so without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vice then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook, it's on a fine wire and it's in black nickel. This one's at size 10. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Sempify, it's the Nano Silk and it's at 12 o. Now as always with the Nano Silks, I am going to get a tiniest amount of super glue onto the shank of the hook to help bed the thread in. And I'm going to get a bit of thread all the way back to just past the point. Once I've got past the point I can remove my rat's tail. Now I'm going to continue my thread a little further to just before the bend of the hook. Now the reason I've taken it down there is I'm going to give this fly uh, an egg sack and what I'm using for that is some hens dubbing this is the number 96, it's a dark green colour, uh, you can use yellows, reds, whatever floats your boat, it's really a trigger mark for the, the fish rather than to imitate any real sort of egg sac coming from the fly. I'm going to dub it on quite hard, it's very fine dubbing so it, it goes to quite a nice rope and then I'm going to build up, it's just loosened up a wee bit there, I'm going to tighten it up again, at the back here a little bump and as I say uh, it's it's not really to emulate an egg sack, it's more a trigger point for the trout. So I've got that in place, next thing I'm going to do is tie in my wire rib and I'm using some of this stuff, this is from Fish On, the label's gone but it's a gold wire and it's at 0.14 millimetres. Now I don't need it to go all the way up the body, so I'm just catching that in with a little tag, and then I'm going to come back to the base of my fly. Now, the balloon part. What I'm using is some uh, Trout Lines CDC. Now this is the Ultra Select, and uh, as I dress up the feathers, you'll see what I mean by Ultra Select. It sounds like it's just a fancy bit of blurb for packaging, but actually, for this fly, you need the very best quality CDC. The ones that your pals have shot out the sky and plucked the feathers out their backsides are no good for balloon caddises, because you need these big, long feathers. So it's worth spending the extra little bit of money and just uh, getting the good stuff. So what I'm going to do is stroke all the feathers towards the tip, just off camera here. And what I've got is I've selected three plumes from my stash. And I'm going to catch it with a couple of loose wraps, just like so. Now once I'm happy it's sitting in the correct position on the shank, I can ease that back to pull that CDC in. And I'm just going to come back another turn and then come forward and tidy up the CDC tips. Now if any get a little bit stranded, you can always come in afterwards with your snips and just take the worst of it away. Okay, that's looking not too bad. Next then, for the body, I'm going to be using some of the Trout Stalkers Possum and it's uh, natural boosted. I've got some out, it's very fine, uh, lovely dub, and it's got some yellows and blues and reds in there. Subtly though, it's, it's quite a subtle dubbing. And again, I can just add a little bit at a time, keeping my dubbing in my left hand, just in case I need any more. Then I can start to build up my body. Don't want a particularly thick body, you know, you're tying a dry fly at the end of the day. It needs to be uh, quite light and be floating. That's the whole. Uh, that's the whole thing with dry flies. 
They've got to be on the surface, really, uh, for them to be effective. So I'm bringing that up. I'm going to leave a little bit of room at the front. So I've got about an eighth of an inch from the eye of the hook there. Now, before I bring my wire rib up, I just want to tease out a bit of that dubbing. It just makes it easier once the rib's up to tease it out again. So my dubbing went round that way. My rib's going to come in the opposite direction because I do want it to... Um, stand out. If you want to bury your rib, you go in the same direction as your thread. But on this occasion, I want the rib to be noticeable, so I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Once I've got to the front, a couple of turns to secure it into place, then you can really tie down hard on it. A few turns in front of the wire, keeping tension on your thread, you can simply twist away the wire rib. Put it to the side for the next fly. Okay, as I said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to again gently tease out some of that dubbing. And what this does is it gives something. So whatever poison you like to use to keep your dry flies afloat, I like to use up high, uh, the Hunt's original stuff, but it's very similar to gink. And uh, I'll gink up all this part of the fly. Uh, before I put it in my box. So next then, I'm going to bring my overwing on. Now before I do that, I want to stroke all these fibres forward to the tip and then bring it over. Now some people like to insert a pen or a bodkin needle into the gap to get their bubble. Uh, I just like to be able to see what I'm doing and, and have my hands free. So I like my bubble to come about in line with the bend of the hook and then I can catch in down at the front here with a few wraps just check that's sitting right for you if you're not happy uh, you can go back you know there's no nothing to say you can't undo it and then re re-go at your bubble I've done that many times uh, to be fair though I do not tie a lot of these flies uh, I don't find them particularly useful in anything other than canally like water. So I don't have a lot in my box. I've got a few, just not a lot. But interesting technique and worth having in your back pocket. And it looks nice. You know, everyone likes a nice looking fly. But as for effective fishing, mm, I'm, I'm not a fan. I've got to say, but as a fly tying exercise, outstanding. Okay, to finish the fly off, I could probably just uh, wrap it up, varnish it up, and it's good to go. But I like to put my own little spin on things, and uh, to do that, I'm going to use some snowshoe. I'm a huge fan of the the material, and uh, this one's been dyed olive. Now I'm going to use my stone flow clip here to take a small amount. From the snowshoe. Now I'm just doing it off camera because it is pretty pretty awkward to do. I don't want a great deal of it either. So I've got it in my clip already and, and I've just basically snipped it away. And I already know that I've got too much because you can't help but get too much in the clip. But it's not a big issue because what we can do is once we've spun it up in our dubbing loop we're going to create, we can then thin it out, and I'll show you that now. So while I've been waffling, the thread's un unraveled, and I can come in with my needle and split the thread to create a dubbing loop. And that opens up just nice. Now, the snowshoe is inserted with a clip and then you can bring your thread to catch that in. Make sure you keep tension on your thread. Nothing worse than moving your bobbin and uh, the tension loses. And the next thing you've got snowshoe all over your vise and not all over your fly, which is where you want it. So just make sure you keep that tension and it, and it won't fall out. As you can see, 
uh, well, not particularly well. Let me get a couple of wraps on so you can see the progress. You can see that I've got quite a thick rope here and I don't want all that. But I'm going to just give it another few spins to tighten it up. But then once that's done, it does thin out no problem. If you just come in with your fingers, oops, it will thin out just to what you want. And that's ideal now. So I'm going to make sure I protect my, my bubble wing by holding it out the way and then bring up my dubbed on snowshoe. Now, just like you would a hackle feather, slip it back out the way. Then when you get to the front, get two or three turns into place. And then what I like to do to finish off, is get a little bit of UV resin onto my thread. Uh, when I'm tying right up to the eye like this, uh, it's always better to finish your fly off this way, rather than trying to come in with a needle afterwards with a little bit of varnish or UV, whatever it is you've chosen to finish the fly off with. This just uh, saves you that job. So, quick finish. In with the scissors. And then don't forget to cure it off or it may well come undone on you. And then once that's done, any little fibres that are getting on your nerves that you can see, you can come in with a pair of tweezers and just remove them. And what I would do before this goes into my fly box, I would use some of the uh, gink-like substance and just dub, dub it onto this before it goes into the box. And then that's your bubble caddis ready to go. Fishing it, uh, I wouldn't fish this in much less than a canal. Well, not a canal, but you know what I mean. canal like water or a back eddy. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please think about clicking that button. I would really appreciate your support.